D Day, written by Michael T. Foley. Focus question: What effect did D Day have on World War Two? Introduction: Hundreds of men huddled in dozens of small landing craft, thinking about their families far away. The men were just off the coast of Germany. Occupied friends, most of them were not highly trained soldiers who had spent their whole life in the military. They were teachers, store clerks, house painters, and other ordinary citizens from from the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada who had been drafted into military service to fight in World War Two. <clears throat> the landing craft was rocking in the rough waters, and many of the men were seasick. All of them were scared. To begin the mission, they needed to jump into the cold water and run across the beaches, while members of the German army, themselves ordinary citizens before the war, shot at them. The world, as the men knew, it had changed, and failure was not an option. This mission, code named Operation Overlord, was a must-win for the Allies. Welcome to the story of D-Day. The D in D-Day, in military terminology, the D in D-Day stands for day. The special code was used for the date of any important military operation, the days before and after a particular D-Day. In this case, June sixth, nineteen forty-four, were indicated using plus and minus signs. For example, D three means meant three days before D Day, June third, and D plus three meant three days after D Day, June ninth. Background: World War Second, World War Two began when German troops invaded Poland in September nineteen thirty nine. The German troops quickly captured Poland and then successfully invaded France in June nineteen forty. Over the next four years, Germany and other Axis powers, Italy and Japan, took over most of Europe and many Pacific islands. Meanwhile, the alien nations, consisting of the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada, the Soviet Union, and many others, were desperately trying to stop the Axis powers. In order to win the war in Europe, the alien nations would have the first free France from German rule. If alien forces were successful in recapturing France, the German troops would be trapped between alien-occupied France and the Soviet Union. Operation Overlord, June sixth, nineteen forty-four, was one of the most important days for Allied forces during World War Two. Allied landings on France, Normandy beaches, marked the start of a long and brutal mission to free Europe and the end of war. The D-Day invasion would be the most ambitious military operation in history. The Allies would have to move more than one hundred and fifty-six thousand men and all the equipment, artillery, and tanks across the England Channel, without the Axis powers discovering the plan in time to concentrate the forces and crush the invasion. The plan called for Allied. Airborne forces to parachute into zones across northern France early on the morning of June sixth. Other troops would then emerge from naval landing craft and storm across five beaches: Uta, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword, that were guarded by the German troops. By the end of the day, the Allies hoped to establish a foothold along the French coast, and begin their begin their advance into German-occupied France. The beaches, Utah Beach, United States Fourth Infantry Division, and and eighty second and one hundred first Airborne Divisions. At six thirty a.m., the U.S. Fourth Infantry Division was scheduled to land on Utah Beach, the west the westernmost of the D-Day beaches. Five hours earlier, paratroopers from the U.S. twenty second and One hundred first Airborne Divisions were dropped at various points two to five miles, three point two to eight kilometers inland. The paratroopers had to secure the main road from Valun, um, Valonier to Carantan. Carantan. German soldiers could not be certain whether the paratroopers were the main attack force. Or decoy force, whose purpose was to distract the Germans from a larger assault. 
The troops who landed on the beach at 6:30 a.m. were supposed to push inland to meet up with the paratroopers as soon as possible. However, the seaborne landing did not go as planned, owing to strong currents caused by the poor weather. The amphibious craft landed 2,200 yards, two kilometers from the intended target on the beach, and the troops had to wade ashore. Brigadiers General Theodore Roosevelt. Junior, the oldest son of former U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, told his men, "We will start the war from here," and ordered them to advance. Fortunately, it was not a heavily defended area of the beach front, so American casualties at Utah Beach was minimal in comparison to those at other beaches. By afternoon, the U.S. Fourth Infantry had met up with American paratroopers, and the German defense was defeated quickly. By the end of the day, the Americans had advanced about four miles inland and were roughly one mile from the American paratroopers of the of their 82nd Airborne at Ste. Murray Eagles some six miles north of Caritan. Omaha Beach, United States First Army. Omaha Beach was six miles in length and was the largest of the five beaches. From the beginning, the U.S. First Army, led by Lieutenant General Omer Bradley, faced incredible odds. For one thing, Omaha Beach was overlooked by 100 foot cliffs, which made it very difficult for the Americans to attack the area. Additionally, the Germans, the Germans had placed dragon's teeth, three to four foot, tooth-like concrete obstacles around the beach to take out any landing craft. These dragon's teeth was also heavily mined with explosives to make matters even worse for the Americans. The beach was heavily guarded by Germans firing from the tops of the cliffs as well as from certain resistant nets, small, self-contained defensive positions. The odds were firmly stacked against Americans before the first shot were fired. The attack on Oma Omaha Beach was scheduled for 6.30 a.m. when the tide was low and the dragon's teeth were visible. The plan was to land infantry troops alongside 29 amphibious Sherman tanks. The armed, the Amor tanks would have given Ailey troops a huge firepower advantage against the Germans. However, disaster struck when the tanks were released from the landing craft too far from the beach. All but two of the 29 tanks flooded and sank to the bottom of the ocean. Nothing could be done to save either the tanks or the crews. Meanwhile, the troops on the beach didn't get the expected armored cover from the tanks. The weather also contributed to the difficulties faced by the Ailes. Powerful winds and the raising tide carried many of the landing craft far off target, and when the troops did land, there was mass confusion as to which unit was where and what it was meant to do. American troops were being picked off by the Germans at a devastating rate. The losses were so severe that Lieutenant General Bertley considered abandoning the entire operation. The only way off the beach was to spring across it toward the cliff while dodging heavy German gunfire. The Americans, who did manage to make it that far, had to then scale the towery cliff. As troops scaled the cliff, U.S. Navy destroyers got as close as they could and attacked the German fortifications at Point Plank Range. The destroyers were extremely important as they provided a measure of distraction and relief from the German sole focus on defeating the Americans on the beach. By afternoon, the, their German battle efforts were weakening. By nighttime, the Americans had gained a hold on Omaha Beach.